after a bullish week in the stock market, one that went hee-haw, hee-haw, and was accompanied by a surprising jobs report, but also doused by increasing beard bug cases. Many are returning back to this glorious spot to ask just one simple question. A question to end all question with an answer to end all answers. And that question is what? What, Charlie, are the top three stocks for this week? Well, my friends, in this video, you are going to be learning about the top three stocks for this week. But before we get into it, let's go ahead and recap last week's picks. Okay, in last week's top three stocks video, we started out with Facebook. At that time, it had just gotten beaten down around 10% on news that advertisers were pulling their ads from the platform. We talked about how strong emotional reactions cause the best overreaction corrections, and thus we wanted to trade off the overreaction correction once we hit a bottom. It found its bottom Monday morning at 206.3 and ran up to nearly 241, which is almost 20% of a run. Now a lot of people will say, but Charlie, 20%, that's weak. Puh, I'm strong, I don't do 20% runs. But the people that say 20% is a weak return are the same ones that say that our FDA approval plays that go up 80%, they say those are just too dangerous. So again, you can't have it both ways. The biggest catalyst plays tend to be the fastest to run and thus the most dangerous, whereas these overreaction beatdowns tend to be a lot more slower and more consistent. Next, we talked about Twitter. Tweet, 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 tweet. Twitter had a similar situation where it was getting beaten down on advertisers dropping out. It found its bottom Monday and ran up to 31.50 before letting off some steam. Pretty solid. Ugh. And next we talked about AMD. Now AMD is a comeback king. So we acknowledged that we were at oversold and that historically buying it at oversold and holding out to overbought always resulted in a good position. Now on Monday we got more overselling but then we had oversold and increasing that ran up to overbought late last week. Pretty solid oversold to overbought correction play. And lastly, last week, we talked about our volatility indices as implied volatility and fear went down last week. Well, our lovely SVXY ran up. Tons of great opportunities there. It's great to have volatility indices in your toolbox. But anyways, I know that a lot of people watch these videos and they just sort of dabble in my picks. Again, it's fine to just, I guess, treat it as gamble plays if you're not really interested in making money over the long run. But if you're actually interested in making money over the long run, I challenge you. Just take some time to be intentional with your trading. Take some time to find good setups. I always talk about trading like a spoiled brat. And all that that means is just making sure that you're getting high quality setups. Making sure that you refuse, you refuse to trade on anything that's not a perfect setup. Perfect doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to go up, it just means that it's so good that it convinces you to take a position. Do not convince yourself that it's a good setup, let the stock market convince you that it's a good setup. But I do want to address one thing before we get into the video, and that is why I'm so calm in my videos. Well, it's because of very diligent meditation. Um, zip, 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 trader, trader, trader. Um, zip, 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 trader, trader, trader. I am channeling my inner ravishingness. I am channeling your inner ravishingness. Make sure to hit that ravishing like button if you haven't already. Also, quick plug, I hope that everybody had a fantastic 4th of July weekend. But for those of you who are unaware, instead of having a July 4th sale on ZipTraderU, I decided to just extend the Stay Home 2020 discount code. So that means that if you want to get $50 off ZipTraderU, all you have to do is type in Stay Home 2020 at that ad coupon spot at checkout. And I don't want to ramble too much, but ZipTraderU is our structured course and private tutoring chat for folks who are looking to be forged into traders and appreciate the structure that comes with being in a course. We'll leave the link below if you want to look more into it. Okay, so to start MU. Now, MU is a lovely tech company that was healthy pre-COVID, but during COVID is uniquely placed to benefit from the increase in demand for cloud computing, 5G wireless networks, and new generations of microchips. MU is Micron Technology, and this is a stock setup that we call a Comeback King. Comeback King, folks, prepare for your majesty. But a Comeback King is when we have the volatility go so consistently up and down and up and down that if we acknowledge this overselling and overbuying, we can take advantage of it. Now, part of the reason that MU has this setup is because it overreacts so quickly to news. Blow up the chart and we can see our overreaction to earnings and then subsequent correction downward. But here is the thing. We know that MU is a comeback king. That means that buying in at oversold at any point in the past has given us a great entry point. Will that pattern continue forever? Obviously not. 
Hell no. But while it's here, we need to acknowledge it and use risk management to control the chance that it breaks. Because now that we just went overbought after the earnings announcement, we are now selling back off and crossing down into fair value territory. It won't take much more of a dip for this to get back to oversold. And when it does and shows signs of increasing, boom, that's when we pounce. Wahaha, -ha -ha, folks. Wahaha. -ha. But let's understand the fundamentals behind this as well. MU is in a period where we just had blockbuster earnings. September 2019, we reported 4.87 billion. December 2019, 5.14 billion. And then boom, beer bug hits 4.8 billion. And now mid beer bug, we are at 5.44 billion. Like sure, slight dip, but if you average this out, it doesn't even make it outside a standard deviation. But Charlie, we are traders. Who cares if the earnings are good? Who cares if the earnings are fairly flat? Well, it's because of fundamental backing. That means that we have more structure and stability in our positions. If we are trading stocks that are in consistent uptrends and are healthy fundamentally, that creates a more stable position for us to trade off of. And if you combine that with a solid pattern play, it's a fruitful position. But think of it this way. If we sell off to oversold again, we are literally in the same fundamental shape as we were in here. In fact, we are in the same shape as we were throughout this consistent uptrend. But because of emotional sell-offs, we have this newfound margin that we can trade off of. So what do we want? Well, we want this to be oversold again, and then we're going to exploit it when we see a setup on that. It's also worth noting that our analyst monkey friends are giving it 32% of upside to $66. And this was largely within the last few weeks as MU blew away analyst price targets. And no, don't get confused, folks. This ain't no zoo. We don't listen to the analyst monkeys. It, it's just worth noting where their opinions lie because a ton of people do listen to them. And this helps us check to see what the crowd is thinking. Okay, next. So news came out today that Warren Buffett's famous Berkshire Hathaway is buying Dominion Energy's natural gas assets for $10 billion. This is a big deal, not just because of the acquisition price, but because this is the first major purchase from Berkshire or Berkshire since the crisis began. Two things I've never been known for are my pronunciation and my Spanish. No habla espanol, folks. But anyways, Berkshire has built a reputation for themselves of being the smart money within the market. And where they go, many follow. But with this purchase, they will carry 18% of all interstate natural gas transmission. But Charlie, why do we care as traders? Well, because this puts the focus this week on ticker symbol D, Dominion Energy. Dominion Energy is an East Coast power and utility company that is increasingly going into sustainable energy and making investments in that direction. It's also been quite flat since the original beer bug beatdown and recovery earlier this year, as this is a company that supplies electricity to many major metropolitan areas on the East Coast but they are having their natural gas assets bought for $4 billion in cash and getting their $5.7 billion in debt acquired. And it's already stated that it's going to be using part of this to do stock buybacks later in the year. But what do stock buybacks do? Well, they take shares out of circulation and increase the current share prices for those already holding. Huge elevating factor. And if people are anticipating this, this creates a, well, pre-anticipatory run-up. But here's the thing. You see, the deal hasn't actually gone through yet. It's pending regulatory approval. And because there's a lot of moving pieces still in flux, we earn our margin for profit in this margin of uncertainty. If the deal had already been approved, I wouldn't be talking about it because it would result in an immediate gap up at open because this would be a sure thing. But because it's still subject to approval and because there's a lot of moving pieces still in flux, we can still earn our margin for profit in this margin of uncertainty. And the influx of volume and capital interest this week will provide setups for us to trade off of in Dominion Energy. And that is why it is on this list. But combining all this information with Dominion Energy's long-sought Supreme Court win over the pipeline, Dominion Energy is looking to have some solid opportunities this week. By the way, random rant. I just keep getting so many comments from folks who are like, Charlie, trading is unethical. It is unethical to trade off fluctuations of stocks. Yeah, well, your face is unethical. And I don't say anything bad about your face. Okay, quick bonus before we go on to the last one. Now, ENDP will be having their FDA approval decision tomorrow, but it's been a bit of a floppy fish. There's no news out right now and literally doesn't seem to have anyone anticipating it. It's also in a bit of a PR nightmare with a high publicity lawsuit filed by the state of New York and Governor Cuomo in response to their connection with the opioid crisis and the allegations that the company misrepresented the safety and efficacy of its opioid drugs. 
but an approval would still bring in a ton of investor volume. And so it's extremely important to have this on your radar for early this week. If it gets disapproved combined with this bad publicity that would cause a beautiful overreaction, a beautiful downward overreaction that we can then go and trade off of. If it gets shockingly approved, we'll likely have setups to trade as well. Who win? Who win, folks? But do not think of randomly holding this. If you decide to randomly hold this, just think of what your mother would say. She'd say, son or daughter, don't randomly hold this. This is a company that has tons of things going against it and is just for trading short-term movement. Okay, lastly, oil and gas. Now we haven't spoken about gush nor drip for quite a while, but gush goes up when oil and gas go up and drip goes up when they go down. These are inverse ETF pairs or ETN pairs. And with new spikes in cases and new potentially looming lockdowns, it's likely we'll see some more volatility in oil and gas as we saw before. And even last week, we saw several clean runs on both drip and gush. Here, 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 and here. And we love clean runs. But the key with these is playing the partner that is in an upper direction over our red directional SMA line and avoiding it when there isn't a clear direction, such as when it goes breaking back and forth. Okay, folks, well, I do hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below or join us on Zip Trader Circle. On Zip Trader Circle, you'll have access to our nightly Facebook watch lists. We also post them every night in our free Discord, but in order to join that free Discord, you will need to join the Facebook group because the link's there. I have to do that because if I don't, then all these little Bitcoin bots go and they advertise on my server and it's just a pain to get out. So, so instead, I just post it in our private Facebook group. So if you do want to join it, you just have to join the Facebook group and then click the link in the Facebook group on the nightly watch lists. But anyways, folks, I challenge you to have a plan and be intentional with every trading decision you make this week and take some time to journal, right? Write down what you did right, what you did wrong, and what you're going to improve on. That way, each loss isn't really a loss, but it's actually a gain in experience. And lastly, if you are wondering what broker to trade these stocks on, well, Webull is offering you not one, but two free stocks if you both sign up and deposit with our link below. And they're a very powerful platform, and you might as well check them out if you are broker curious. Anyways, folks, good luck on the battlefields this week, and, well, I'll see you in the next video.